Okay, in this video lesson, we're going to wrap everything up. We've got a level editor that now allows a designer to create levels and store them in packages and have that saved out to disk. We have Evil Monkeys, the game that is now completely playable, tracks player lives, enemies, etc. But the only problem at the moment is that Evil Monkeys will randomly generate our levels and... Well, that's it. It just randomly generated level after level after level, and it never ends. Yep. So we would like to go ahead and make it so that Evil Monkeys now has the ability to load the packages we save from the level editor and allow us to play the levels that exist inside of those packages. That's right. And that is our goal. Now, let me start out with a warning. This is probably going to be the most complicated lesson we've had so far. Right, simply because we kind of jump around a lot. Yeah, we've got to go all over the place because we're making some, some pretty big changes to Evil Monkeys. That's right. And by the end of this lesson, we're also going to go back over to the level editor, and we're going to implement the test icon up on the toolbar so that we can test our levels from there as well. Yep, okay. and that's simply a three-line change pretty yeah. much. So the first thing we're going to do is modify Evil Monkeys app frame to include some of the the new variables we'll need so just like in our level editor we'll have a level info we'll have our package and last but not least we have our level type which remember before we had random new level that's right we're also going to add our next package level and let me well, I won't describe all of these because there's a lot so um, the next one we're going to do is modify the constructor um, of our app frame to include um, loading game functionality so that when we actually go to use our level editor to press the test button it actually runs it and in the constructor we pass it the level and the current level that they're at okay um, from there we'll add functions and variables specific to loading inside of the app frame so we'll have the load game function um, we'll also um, create the package variable and package loaded variable package variable is going to be of type package mm -hmm. And our package loaded variable is simply going to be a Boolean value that says whether or not our package has been loaded. That's right. Um, from there, we'll actually implement the changes to the constructor. Um, for example, we'll be initializing the variables. And then we'll implement slash modify all the functions um, that we've, we've talked about so far. We'll have the onload function. So when we go to file, load, it's going to call this function. And it's going to give us the dialog box, and it's going to load the level. Um, we'll have an, the update game, which we just need to modify, right. um, which will allow us to advance to the next package, uh, next level, next in, level the in the package. Right. Um, we also need to modify start new level, and we're going to create the load game function. Now, let's go ahead and create these five steps, actually, okay. and then we'll talk about the rest of these steps. That sounds good. Um, so let's go back over into .NET. The first thing we're going to do is add our Evil Monkeys project into this solution because um, we can have multiple projects in one solution. So let's go to add, add existing project, and under our lesson 13 here, we'll just go to Evil Monkeys and add in the Evil Monkeys project. Um, so let's open up our Evil Monkeys here. Oh, that sounds so funny, Evil <laughs> Monkeys. Um, and go to our header file, and let's go down just a little bit. Under level type, let's go ahead and add our next package level. And we'll also need our level info as we're talking about. So we'll have our struct level info. And Just like you saw over inside the level editor. That's right. No difference. Because, of course, we're loading from, from the exact same file. So we want to kind of remain consistent here. Right. And we're going to have our type def of list level info pointer package. And we're also going to need to modify our constructor, as we were mentioning. So we're going to pass two more elements into this constructor, a file name and the starting level, so that if, say, the user is modifying inside the level editor, a level that's maybe at the end of the package, right. it'll automatically start at that level. Right. Um, so we'll call this file name. Well, it needs to be a WX string file name. And we'll give it a default value of just empty, right. which means we don't actually want to load a uh, uh, starting level. And then we'll set the starting level equal to zero. Which is where we'd want it to be if we were going to play a random right. level. And let's see. Now let's add, let's go ahead and add the onload function, which we have right here already. Okay. Because we've already prototyped everything. That's Very right. nice. Um, and if we come down to our private variables here, let's add our load game function. So this is where most of the code that we're going to be adding in this lesson, um, it's mostly going to be in this function here. And the starting level is going to be equal to 1. 
All right, now in our private variable section, we're going to add two variables, our package pointer, package, and the Boolean that we're talking about, our package loaded. So if we just take a quick second, go back to context, and just look for a second here, we've just done everything here all the way up to here. Very nice. So that's good. And we've also done this, in fact, step number three. Now we just need to implement the changes to the constructor and implement those functions. Okay. So let's go back over into .NET and go into the appframe.cpp and start modifying the constructor um, so that we can get everything set up. Oh, and also do not forget that since we modified the constructor there, we're also going to need to add our WX string file name. And the init starting level here. That's right. Nice. So we're also going to need to initialize the new variables we created, which includes package loaded. We'll set that to false by default, and our package will set that to null. And on the very bottom of this constructor, let's go ahead and say if file name does not equal blank blank, that means that we want to load whatever was passed into the constructor. So let's call load game and pass it file name and starting level. Simple enough. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go to the on load, which is just down here a little bit, which is currently an empty function, and simply create a file dialog to ask the user what package he wants to load. So this is again going to be much like our level editor. So we're going to say t open package and this one's going to just be t blank blank. These are unnecessary since we have another empty. Another empty. And then we're just going to pass this package packages because these are of type packages dot pkg. And then it's going to be that's going to be the mask for it. And then finally, we're just going to pass this zero um, to have a default um, default styles, if you will. So with that created, all we need to do is say if the dialog you after showing it as modal, it returned to us wx id ok. Go ahead and load the game. Right. So we load the game and pass it the path that the user selected. So um, get path dot c string. Again, Character string. you guys should recognize this. It's absolutely the same. It's identical as over inside the level editor. That's right. So with that, let's go ahead and um, go down to our update game and make any changes we need to that so that this new new functionality will work. Okay. So in our update game here, you'll notice that, uh, let's go down to here. Right now, we automatically just say, okay, start new level, random new level. Well, at, in this case, we want to say, if the package is loaded, do such and such. Otherwise, do simply, um, otherwise we want to load then the next package the, level. Right. So if package loaded, we're going to do a completely uh, a different set of things. So we're going to start new level, next package level. <clears throat> and in start new level, remember we said, um, start new level returns a Boolean value of true or false. So if it returns us a value of true, that means that we have won the game. The mm -hmm. game is over and we've won. So inside of here, if this returns true, we're going to say package loaded equals false, and we're going to set the game state equal to state player one. And then we're going to just update the view so it says you have won, or whatever message we decide at the time. And let's just return, because we have done whatever we need to do here. Otherwise, if we aren't done with it, we're going to say level add enemies zero and you'll see in a second that we're going to go to the level mm -hmm. the level class make a few modifications so that when we add enemies and we pass it a value of zero it looks through the loaded file to add it wherever we specified right um, so then we're going to just set the player start to wherever we set the player start to otherwise if we did not if a package is not loaded, just pretty much do what we did before. So else, and let's just kind of pick this stuff up, and so there. Okay, cool. So also, one other thing we're going to need to change is inside of here, if the game has been considered over, make sure we say package loaded is false. Because this is very, very important, otherwise you'll get some serious errors. So right. be very, very careful about that. Now. With that done, let me just quickly switch over to context so you guys aren't seeing code constantly and getting confused. Um, so we've implemented the changes to the constructor. 
We've done onload. We've modified update game. Now we need to modify start new level so that we can pass it the package loaded, um, next package loaded. And then we need to actually create the load game function, which you'll find to be very, very similar to what we created in the level editor. Right. So, back to our .NET. Okay, hang on for one second. Yeah, sure. Look at that. Um, okay, good. Okay. Um, so let's go down a little bit. And we're going to our start new level function. So let's go to start new level. And I knew I was going to do that. So start new level right here. And let's start making sure that everything inside of here is right. So before, the only case that we had was random new level. We're going to add another case inside of here. And this is going to be the next package underscore level. And inside of here, we're going to create an iterator that's going to loop through all the packages and set it to the to the level that we want it to be at. So let's create an iterator here of level info um, pointer. So it's going to be an iterator called it. And we're going to start out the loop with zero. Uh, let's see here. Right. And you'll see why in a second here. And let's just get rid of this for now because it's going to be very, very different. So if the current level that we're at, which is an integer by the way, unlike the last um, in the level editor, current level was actually an info point, level info pointer. Right now this is just an integer as you can see from the pop up here. So we're going to create this as an integer, convert whatever is passed back to us. So, excuse me, size. So if we have the current level has exceeded the size of the package, that means we've won the level, right? So we're just going to say return true. And then of course our update game is going to say, oh, we've won the game, so change the state. Right. Um, so at this point we're going to say for IT equals the iterator equals package begin. Um, and as long as IT does not equal package um, end. End, or end yeah. and then we're going to just in increment the iterator so it goes through it and I++ is going to increment the index, the numeric index into our level so that we can test it inside of our for loop Right. so if I which we started at 0 and it's going to increment throughout the loop equals current level minus 1 because um, I is 0 based in this case we're just set it that way uh, we're going to create our level info new level and this is just going to point at our iterator, the current one. And then we're going to create a new level based off the the level that our package has for us. Right. Um, so we have new level, and we're going to pass it our draw area, and then the size is going to be new level um, grid underscore x. Oh well, well, actually the first one, my bad. Um, right now, let me just quickly head over onto my game over here, and under level dot cpp. Um, the default constructor that we've created before has draw engine width and height. We're, we are going to create a new constructor for this that will directly pass the grid information because you'll notice here that we allocate the new memory for it and then we go ahead and create a random level. So we're going to create a new constructor for this in a minute. Um, so the first one's going to be the drawer, the second's going to be the grid information, and then the width and the height. So grid underscore x and new level and then grid underscore y. And with that we'll just break out of the loop and say that we found the level we wanted and we've created it. Um, other than that, since we have level.getWidth and we uh, utilize everything properly, all the rest of this should be perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to the massive function of the day, which is going to be our load game. Whew. Which again is not too bad since we've done already done this in the level editor. That's so. true. So we have our load game, and we're going to pass it a file name, and what starting level we want. There's so there's still going to be a, a chunk of stuff to it, though. Oh yes, there <laughs> is. <laughs> so we have our package is going to equal a new package. So first, create the new package for us, and then we'll create our new player, which is going to be a mage. Um, let's pass the draw area, the pointer to the draw area for our player, and we'll just pass it a sprite index of zero. Now, all we need to do is load the file. So let's create our file stream. And let's open the file up. So we'll pass it file name. This is what we want to open. And again, we want to read plus we want to binary it. We want to read in binary form. Right. 
And again, we're going to create the number of levels, a temporary variable holding the number of levels. And let's read that in from our stream. It's going to go into num levels. Find out how many levels we have. And we have the size, the size of, of an, an integer, int exactly. And there's only one of them. So now we'll just pass it the stream pointer or the file pointer. Now we're also going to create another local variable called first level. And we're going to use this to decide which level is going to be considered the first level. And since we're going to create a loop in a second, doing this will help us. So let's go ahead and set that. Now let's loop through um, loop uh, num levels number of times so that we can get all the levels loaded. So num levels i++. So inside of here, let's go ahead and create, just as we did before, create a new level info and start loading the information into this newly created structure. So f read and we'll pass the pointer of our new level. It's grid x. And it's going to be the size of an integer. It's going to be one integer. And we'll pass it. Use the stream. Right. And again, we'll just copy and paste this and just modify this to our y. Cool. Yeah, very good. And then let's start allocating the memory necessary for this. So for our grid structure here, our grid array, let's create a new character point um, array that has a total of grid x. And so basically this is setting the number of columns, if you will. Okay. Um, and let's make sure that we make um, set this to a character uh, array of character pointers because this is going to be a lot of character pointers. Because right. um, we're going to have another loop right here that loops through all of these columns and creates um, allocates memory for each column. Mm -hmm. um, so let's set while x is less than new level grid underscore x x plus plus and then inside of here let's go ahead and just allocate the memory necessary so new level and grid x yep. equals a new character that's gonna have y elements so that's the size of each column so oh, we're gonna have a new level um, yeah grid y me. new level grid y yeah so there we have it now let's start since we have everything allocated let's go ho uh, go ahead and read in the information from the file so we have 4 int x equals 0 x is going to be less than new level um, grid x x plus plus now let's start loading in this information so f read new level um, grid kind of what we have right up above us right except now we're reading it in size of it's character. yep and we're gonna read new level, in grid y yep the number of columns the size of each column which is grid y and, and it's going to be our stream pointer. Cool. So with that, um, now let's go ahead and since we have each package, let's add this new level to the package. So levels dot pushback, and let's put in our new level. And if i is equal to starting level minus one, which is what was passed to us, then we're going to set current level, which is an integer. Remember, well, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be inside the if statement here. Uh -huh. Current level is an integer. So we'll set current level equal to starting level. And we'll set first level, which if you remember we declare right up here, which is a level info pointer. We're going to have first level equal new level. Right. Now we can just go ahead and close the, uh, the stream. Yep. So let's go ahead and close the stream. F close stream. And let's go ahead and tell it that the package is indeed loaded. Right, and this is an important step so that everyone knows what's going on. And let's start the new level. Let's get everything rolling here. So next package underscore level. And let's add the enemies. And again, we'll implement this inside the level class in a second here. I mean, we're just going to modify. We've already yeah, got we'll add enemies. Right. Yeah, but normally don't add enemies zero. <laughs> right. And we'll set the current level to one. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead. And let's see, set the game state equal to state game in progress. Yeah, because we've just started a game. Right. So we can go ahead and start the timer, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we can. So let's see, m underscore timer, start, and we have a constant that says update time. Perfect. Wow, that's a lot of writing, okay. but there we have it. Um, so we've loaded the game. 
Now, if we go back over into context, let's look at where we are now. We've just implemented or modified all these functions. So we've just finished step five. Now we need to make it so that evil monkeys actually reads in arguments that's passed to it. And this is going to be useful when we create it, when we make the um, t test tool test level toolbar button work. Right. Um, so let's go back into .NET and get that set up. So if we go into evilmonkeys.cpp, um, let's start reading in these arguments. So we're going to read in the file name, which will just create a local variable that will store it. And we'll also need to read in the starting level. And we'll start that out with zero. And the way this works is we're going to say argc, which wx widgets is handling for us, which simply means the number of arguments that was passed to us, if that equals equals three. Now we're going to be passing two things, the file name and the starting level. But we say three because the first argument is the file name, well, us, what our name is, which would be evilmonkeys.exe. So if it equals to three, that means they did pass what we want in. And we'll just say file name is equal to argv1. So the argument value 1. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to otherwise read in the second one. See, we want to get the starting level, which is the second argument. And we can do that by passing in argv2, which we is a string, and we want to convert it to a long. So using wxstring, we pass that in and say to long. And we pass the, the pointer to our starting level. Is that making sense, right? Absolutely, and but I'll tell you what, WX widgets sure can come in handy. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. It saves so much work. Um, and then of course in our app frame, in the constructor we want to pass whatever file name was passed to us. Right. And, and that's, that's why we had to make sure that it was first set to blank blank, um, have nothing in our file name or zero, just in case, you know, they didn't really pass us anything. Right. And let's go ahead and pass the starting level. Yeah. Cool. So with that, um, that simply completed, if we go back into context here, step number six. Now we need to modify the level class, as we were talking about before, to add the new constructor so that the loading will work properly, and then modify our add enemies to read in at three, Take put an enemy here, yeah, etc. Yeah, exactly. Take care of that zero coming in. Yep. So if we come back over into here, let's open our level.cpp, which we're, well, actually, let's start in level.h, so we can add the new constructor here. And if we just scroll down a little bit, right here, remember, we have our draw engine. Um, we pass in the width and the height. It's going to be a little bit different here, but let's copy and paste this. The second one we're passing in is going to be a character double pointer for the grid so that we can directly pass in the data. Otherwise, it's just going to be our grid X and grid Y or our width and our height, just like we have now. And we don't really need to give it a default value because... In this case, if you use this constructor, you're going to have to pass in a width and a height. You can't have some default value. Okay. Um, so that's going to work. That's good. Now, let's go ahead and go into the level.cpp file, and let's implement this constructor. So let's come into here and start typing this out. So we have our level, so our draw engine, and then we have our character pointer, and then we'll just use, just because I kind of prefer this naming convention, we use int grid. And of course, this doesn't, in the level.h, we use different names. It doesn't really yeah, matter. Doesn't matter. Um, and then right here, we'll call the draw area. We'll set the draw area to what was passed to us, which is de. Okay. And I did spell that wrong. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, since the data is passed into us, We'll simply set our level data equal to grid. Mm -hmm. So that's most of the work right there. Then we'll set our width and our height to our grid X and our height to our grid Y. And we'll set the starting position at first to simply start X equals start Y equals 1. But here's the really the most important function of this new constructor that we have here is that we want to loop through this information. Remember when we saved out the information to file, um, the value 2 was set to the starting position of the player. So we want to loop through all this information and set start x and start y to the position at which we have the value 2. Right. So let's loop through and find that value. So while x is less than width, add it. And while y is less than height, go ahead and go through all the y's as well. And then inside of here, let's say if level at x and y is equal to 2, 
go ahead and set level XY to zero so that that can be considered a blank area but then go ahead and set start X and start Y to where we want the player to be starting. Right. So start Y equals Y. Now let's just go ahead and break out of the loop. So that's the constructor. Oh, and finally, do not forget this. We want to make sure we set our draw areas map so that it points at the new level that we've just created or, or that that data information. Otherwise, the draw area won't know how to draw the background. Right. Now if we go down to our add enemies, this is the other main function that we need to change for this to work. If the number that is passed into us, this number of enemies that we want to add, is equal to zero, then we know we want to load, then we know we're loading something from a file here. So all we're going to do is loop through the entire level information and look for the value three, because remember three is the value that represents each of our enemies. That's right. So we can say while this is less than width, just as we did above, loop through this. And again, this is where we need elevator music. <laughs> uh, Joel, you're doing fantastic. Lots and lots of typing. Fun, fun. 900 lines more to go. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, so if this is equal to 3, what do we want to do? Um, let me put this ending parentheses here. If this is equal to 3, we want to actually create our new enemy. So we'll say new enemy and the level is going to, the level pointer is going to be this um, let's not forget to pass it the draw area and it's going to be a sprite enemy and he's going to be at, at float this specific location float x and float y and so we've created the enemy now we can set a few things like yeah, we his wanna, speed right just as we added in a few lessons ago and we want to set his speed to speed which well actually in this case we're not passing it so we'll right. set it to say 70 and that's something else you could add into the level editor if you really wanted to the ability to set the speed for each enemy mm -hmm. if you so pleased and that sure. would be a cool feature to add um, but anyway um, we'll also add add our goal in other words who the enemies are going to be chasing after and that's going to be player and let's go ahead and add this NPC into our list of non-player characters so Let's cast it into a sprite pointer and just add it into our list. And of course, add NPC comes back from VTM number three. Oh, yes. Functionality we created a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Galaxy far, far away. That's right. So if it's this way, we want to make sure to just return from the function so that it doesn't do all this other stuff, which is basically randomly add a player to somewhere. Okay. And let's see here. Let's make sure that I added this. And just for the sake of cleanness, let's go ahead and add two more um, curly braces here just to make it look a little bit nicer okay so with that we only have a few more things to go and then we'll be done with all of this madness um, mm -hmm. if we come over into context check this out we've just finished this level class Wow and we need to make one change to the draw engine to accommodate the loading which is not that difficult of a change we simply need to go over to the draw engine and this is almost kind of a uh, our fault for not doing this in the beginning is we want to make sure that whatever's in map X and Y is not an invalid index. Okay. So basically all we want to do is say, uh, let's kind of just add two more curly braces here again to just make it a little bit more clean looking. So if the map at X and Y, and remember the map holds the data, if that does not equal three, let's make sure that if a three is there, mm -hmm. let's make sure it doesn't try to print it because we don't have a tile that it's a three, right? Right. So let's go ahead and set that and that's all there is to it so at this point we should be able to just um, we all all that we have left to do is make the test level to a bar button work so what we need to do is come into here and compile this and make sure we can load something that we created in the last lesson remember we did create a few test levels right so if this works then we should be all set and I just oh I just made a little mistake here that's what I meant to say <laughs> Oh, that's just awesome. That's incredible. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead and run this and see if everything works properly and it better. Oh, uh, another thing we wanted to test our evil monkeys. So let's exit out this. And when you have multiple projects inside of a solution, simply right-click on the project you want to have as a startup project and say set a startup project. And it becomes bold. And then if you press Control-F5, now this one loads. Nice. Um, so if we go to File, Load, 
Remember, we have these package one and package two that we created in the last lesson. Let's go ahead and see if these work. Ooh, check it out. Okay. Run for your life. And we set a speed that's actually pretty high as the default. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty impossible Game to win. Over. But so that works. Yep. Um, so the last thing we need to do is go over into our level editor and make sure that we can actually run it. Right, so we can test So levels. we can test it, that's yeah. Right. So let's go into our level editor project. And I find it very, very convenient to have inside of one solution both our evil monkeys project and our level editor so that I don't have to you know, open another solution, yada, yada. It, this is very, very nice, so I highly recommend it. Um, it's kind of a duh thing, but you know. Yeah. Um, so let's go into our appframe.cpp. And remember where we did our um, toolbar button. So that's going to be on, let's see, where is it? On toolbar clicked. And it's not going to do it for me on toolbar clicked. So let's just go to that function here. So we have our app frame on toolbar clicked. And let's add another case here. And this is going to be our TLB test level. So when they click the test level button, what do we want to do? First, we want to, whoa, sorry about that. Um, first, we want to save out our level to a temporary file and then call or execute evil monkeys with the parameter of that temporary file. Um, so inside of here, we're going to call our save package function and just save out temp.pkg. And then there's another really, really awesome function inside of WX widgets that allows us to execute an external application. So that's just simply WX execute. execute. Yep. And we'll pass it the string and we'll format it. So evil monkeys, remember this almighty format function allows us to pass in, convert integers to strings and all sorts of cool stuff. So we're going to pass this as evilmonkeys.exe because that's the name of evil monkeys. And we're going to pass it um, temp.pkg, which is the package that we just saved. And we're going to pass it a percent %d. And of course, for this one, that's simply our level index. So we want to start at whatever level index we're at. And so we'll end it off with that. And if we compile this, Give it a second. Elevator music time. I'd say we're pretty much done. Yes, we are pretty much done. <laughs> um, and let's go into our level editor here and set it as the startup project. Run this guy. And let's go ahead and create a new package. And uh, let's say at 12 by 12. Whoa, not 152. Um, and let's just create a simple level so that we can, uh, I don't know, see something going on. Let's put our player in a nice safe spot. And let's create a few enemies. If we run this, check it out. The levels, uh, the enemies actually attack me. Absolutely beautiful. Now let's go ahead and close that out, and just for the heck of it, let's. We haven't saved this out yet. Um, let's go ahead and add a new level yeah. to this. And um, say ten by ten, or you do want a twenty by twenty. Whoa! How about fifteen by fifteen? All right. And uh, yeah, I'll stretch that out. And let's go ahead and draw something in there real quick. Ooh, look at those great skills. You create much better looking levels than I do. <laughs> and just, yeah, monster too. That's good. Okay. Now let's back back up to level one. There you go. Now let's go ahead and test that and be prepared to play. Do you want me to win? Yes, I want you to win. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so let me run this. Uh, and, of course, it seems like we have a small little issue, but that's no worries. Let's just exit out of this and go into here. And make sure that we didn't accidentally create something stupid here. Let me put my level here to see how that works. So if I go back one, run this here. Whoa. <laughs> that was a nice dodge. Whoa. Okay, so what we're going to do is first um, see what's going wrong here. Okay. So let's exit out of this and go into our C++ file and try to find out where this monster lies. Okay. Oh, Okay, we just jumped off camera real quick so that we could find out what our little <laughs> issue was. And trust me, it's a very little issue. Oh, very, very With little. so many things going on, it's very, very easy to forget some of the old infrastructure that was in place from um, the original port of Evil Monkeys over to the, the window-based world. That's right, and it's kind of a, a simple fix that we did before. If we go over to App Frame, this is actually kind of funny. Um, and we go down into our... Let's see, our update, well, our start new level, excuse me. So our start new level right over here. And that keeps on doing that to me. Um, so let's just find our start new level. No. All open documents. So right there. 
So we have our start new level function, as and you remember. Again, we are, we're we are in evil monkeys. Evil monkeys. Yeah, that's the only thing that's kind of confusing when you have multiple projects is right. you can't forget, remember where you are. And this is the big thing about this is if you go back up, this is where that the, the switch was. Yeah, we, we did from random new level or next package and, level. And remember many, many lessons back in this VTM, at the very end, we always returned. True. Right. And if we look, we just returned true. Well... What does that mean? Return true means we've won the game. That's right. Um, so we want to change this to return false, and that is the almighty bug that we had, <laughs> um, so which is pretty impressive. Um, so let's go ahead and compile this, and let's run it. Let me walk you back to this. Do a new... Uh, new oh, you're going to walk me through it. Yeah, damn. All right, so 10 and 10, and make something that you can actually win. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to do that, too. I'm going to make it so that I have to win. <laughs> I just go ahead and put them here. Okay. Now go to a new level and different sizes. That's nice. And maybe very simple to win this one. We'll do three. Um, three what? Three levels. Okay. Now I'm going to make it really easy again. Okay. So one more. Okay. Th and 14 by 14. Sure. And it's getting harder, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's getting hard. And for this one, uh, let me make something a little bit interesting. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I know, I know. I'm amazing. So now, to continuing pushing everything. Go back. Yep, there you go. Now, um, go back to the middle level. All right, level. Now, add one more monster in the far upper left hand corner. You can do it. Now, go back to our level one, and let's test. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we have two monsters in this one, or evil monkeys. Look at that. Ah, success! Success! We now have a fully functional Evil Monkeys game that has a level editor, in which you can design your own levels. Basically, you can define a game now by creating a package and putting however many levels are needed for that particular game. Yep. And then we can test each of the levels out. And of course, you see that when doing the test, it will advance to the next level if there is another level there. And I've kind of pushed Joel to test all of the different ways and combinations that we can uh, that we can do this we can make a screw up and now of course <laughs> um, if uh, we can go ahead and finish this off if you don't mind let's go and close the game down but back in the level editor uh, that's um yep that's simply because we need to recompile we need to re recompile everything right. so um we'll go ahead and recompile everything real okay quick. so let's just go to a rebuild solution just to get all the linking correct Okay, because once this is done, what I'm going to have you do is jump back into the level editor one last time, uh -huh. build me a couple quick levels, right. and this time let's save it out, close the level editor all and together, the load. and load. Yeah, use the load from the game. And then we'll have tested every combination with going through multiple levels and everything. So let's go ahead and go. Well, actually, we already saved a few levels, or do you want to create a few yeah, we more? Can just, we, can, no, we can just go ahead and use what's been saved, because okay. we haven't tampered with any save code, obviously. Right. So let's go ahead and load this one. Okay. And uh, let me kind of just You got it some out with it. multiple levels? Yeah, I okay. think we have our package 2 here. Okay, cool. And if I could win. Success. Aye, success. That's actually a cool level. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to win. <laughs> so, yes, we have won the game. Won the game. Fantastic. And over on the right-hand side, of course, our little status area is keeping up with life's level and enemies. So, everything's working together, right? Yes, it is. Joel, my good friend, this does bring us to the very end of a very, very long VTM. Tier. Tier, yes. Uh, we've looked at a lot. Um, so much so that if you want to know everything we've looked at, go back and watch the video. <laughs> we've taken the old Evil Monkeys game that we put together in VTM number three that just used the console for uh, our visual display of yep. what was taking place. And we have now brought it over into the wonderful world of Windows and or WX widgets. By uh, through through w the use of WX that's, widgets. That's right, through WX widgets, and um, and now we've uh, implemented an infrastructure that allows us to um, load files, advance through levels, all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, along the way, we even went as far as to detour long enough to create a level editor, l allowing a designer complete freedom to design the levels the way they'd like. And I think we've. I actually, I don't think I know. We've given you guys enough stuff now that you could be creative and start coming up with little power-ups, yep. start coming up with like a ladder that would automatically make a person advance to another level, uh, you can go down a ladder, climb back up the ladder, do little neat things like that, Right. Um, a final exit, portals, teleporters, all sorts of stuff, and go back in here 
and uh, very little would need to be changed to implement each of these things. That's right. Because of the way that this code has been put I together. I mean, even using the base code that we have here, you could create some sort of RPG where you could scroll around the level. Mm -hmm. And that's, sure. it's very possible. Absolutely. So with that, I hope you guys were able to get a lot out of this. It's very tough to teach something that's this size. Yeah. This is really, really big um, without it going you know, much over four or five hours, which yeah. is probably where we're at right now. I haven't added all of this up. Uh, it, it's been it's been challenging. It, it's uh, a couple of spots, you know, just trying to find some bugs here and there. But when you start dealing with hundreds and hundreds of lines of code and you're talking and typing at the same time. It's kind of inevitable. It's, it's Yeah, it's very difficult since things are all over the place. Well, that makes it even harder to track things down. But we appreciate everybody out there that's watched this. Like I said a second ago, I hope you guys got a lot out of it. And uh, come by to www.3dbuzz.com. Keep track of all the cool things that we're doing because uh, while this is uh, definitely some of the most advanced content we have produced yet, we're not stopping here. We're, we're going to push it even further. And with that, I'd like to thank you guys, and that's going to conclude this VTM. Take care.